Today I'm going to make a couple of cocktail smokers without a CNC machine. A lot of woodworkers sell these simple gadgets for good profit and I tend to make a lot of gifts so I'm including in this video the build of a gift box with a smoking hot lid for a complete cocktail smoker kit. Starting with a piece of 5 quarters white oak and a 1 and 5 8 inch Forstner bit, I drill a hole a half inch deep. And then switching to a 3 quarter inch Forstner bit, I create a concentric hole an additional 3 16 of an inch deep. Making two of these smokers, so I just repeat it for the second one. The circle jig that I'm going to use requires to remove the base plate of my router, and it's important to use the centering disc and alignment pin when attaching the jig to the router. After attaching my workpiece to a sacrificial base using double-sided tape, then I use a quarter inch spiral upcut bit and make a total of four passes until I cut all the way through. Uh, oops! Stop short of getting that last little piece. If you wanted to make a whole batch of these to sell, you could probably cut them out as quickly as a CNC machine does and the quality of the cut is every bit as good. To replace the base plate on my router, I'm making use of a centering cone. It's super important to make sure it gets perfectly centered. Not sure it's really necessary, but I polish up the edges a bit on the oscillating sander with a 240 grit belt. The initial through hole was only 8th inch diameter to work with the pin for the circle jig, so now I'm drilling it out to a half inch diameter just to ensure a good flow of smoke. With this little stainless steel pipe screen to keep the ashes from falling through, then this cocktail smoker is complete. I'll finish it with some mineral oil and test it out later in the video along with the whole kit. So let's move on to the smoker kit gift box, which I'm making from some white oak. I'm using a half inch dado stack and a box joint jig on my table saw and I set the blade height to be the same as the thickness of the box side pieces. Each time I use this jig the height of the blade is never exactly the same so I tack on a removable zero clearance plate. This is really important since the center chippers of the dado stack tend to splinter the wood out without it. And then I just cut each box joint slot one by one as I work my way through all of the pieces. And then just a quick test fit and all is good. For the top and bottom of the box I resaw some 3 quarter inch pieces in half using my 10 inch benchtop bandsaw and then glue up those two pieces so that I get a book match grain. And then using my planer to mill it down to final thickness. This box is being made from white oak, although I'm using some paduk as an underlayment on the lid to get that red color I'm looking for in the flame design. Cutting the slot for the box bottom on the table saw on two sides is just a straight cut all the way through and on the other two sides the dado needs to be hidden so I carefully lower the workpiece making use of some pencil lines on my fence. And it's one of those days when I realize that I still have my riving knife installed. Okay so I remove the riving knife, make the cut and take a lunch break before I do something else dumb to hurt myself. To cut the slot for the paduk insert on the top, I'm using a half inch straight bit on the router table. I cut the notch on the bottom panel with a rabbiting bit. And a quick sanding on all of the inside surfaces to 180 grit before glue up. By making use of some blue painter's tape, I'm hoping to avoid a glue mess on the inside corners. I'm using Tight Bond 3 to give myself a little extra setup time, but really not too difficult of a glue up. I was able to dry fit the box joints with just hand pressure, but with glue on them they need a little extra clamping pressure to pull them together. In my opinion, that's the perfect fitting box joint that I strive for. I remove the blue tape with the glue still wet and then glue in the paduk insert and let the whole thing dry overnight.
After sanding the joints down, it's time to cut the lid off with just a simple cut on the table saw. I'm using a laser engraver to cut the flame pattern from a piece of 8 inch thick white oak. This low budget, entry level laser is pretty amazing to be able to cut through solid oak. I have a separate video that goes through the laser settings and setup, so I'll defer to that video if you're looking for more info on how I made this cut. Gluing on the outer veneer of the lid is pretty straightforward. I'm using some 3 quarter inch melamine as a clamping call. After the glue is dry the next day, I trim up the edges with a flush trim bit on my trim router. To build the internal dividers, I resaw some slices on the bandsaw. And then clean them up on the planer, getting down to an eighth inch thick. After setting my table saw to 45 degrees, and I'm using my 45 degree crosscut sled to make some inserts for the sides of the box so that the lid fits on nicely. With the help of a crosscut sled, I'm able to cut some slots on the dividers so that they all fit together like a puzzle. A bit meticulous to get the measurements all just right, and I'm pretty happy with how well it fits together, just using a small amount of glue to hold it in place. Assuming this box might get wet or spilled on over time, I'm finishing it like I would a cutting board. I'm using some water to raise the grain before the final sanding, and then dousing it with some food safe mineral oil inside and out, including the cocktail smokers. I'll leave links in the description on where to get these stainless steel screens, the torch, the wood chips, everything needed to make the whole kit. Alright, it's time to test out this smoker gadget on an old fashioned. Nice! I'm stoked! Thanks so much for watching!